It is like someone goes out and they spend a ton of money on a Lamborghini and then they insist on buying, like finding an imported rusty barrel of Libyan leaded gasoline with little sticks floating in it, and then wondering, why doesn't their Lamborghini run well? This is a model 1914 Lewis gun. The first 10 rounds of this pan are British, World War II, uh, 303 rounds. The uh, second uh, 10 are POF, and that's Pakistan. And then the final are uh, HXP Greek, 1970. The British is not doing too well. Should be about the end of the brick. That should be about the end of the brick. Bolt's not locking back. Now it seems to be all right. Give me the loader, I'll uh, put some more back in. But I'll, I'll be like, I got one, two, three, four. I'll put four through, because I got that many anyway. And then we'll get into the Greek and have something that actually runs. One. Two. Now we should have something that works. Well, I would say that the Greek is definitely the ammunition that you want to have. I think I'm empty. And that's why you don't deliberately run the crappiest ammo in your machine guns. Absolutely right. You don't run that crap for ammo in your machine gun. Buy good stuff, shoot good stuff. That's the way to do it. It continues to just be kind of mind boggling to me sometimes that what in particular machine gun owners will sometimes do with absolute penny pinching on ammunition to the point that the guns don't run. Like what's the point of going out, like why would you spend that much money? And a lot of the times, especially with the current price insanity on ammunition, you're paying like 75% as much for something like that World War II surplus British 303 that you would for ammo that's actually going to work. And there are people who look at it and say, yes, I will take a 25% savings to have a gun, to have ammo that won't even run the gun. Like what's the point of shooting a machine gun when it performs like that and doesn't even, can't even fire more than one round in a row because the ammunition is so poor quality, has so many hang fires, so many duds, deteriorated powder. You know, the issue is, is the same. The issue exists for bolt actions and semi-auto and non-machine guns as well, but it's particularly baffling that people do this with machine guns. You know, you spent how much money on that machine gun? And you're gonna deliberately run the poorest quality ammunition you can manage to find to buy in it? I think it's an incredible case of false economy. Uh, and I would strongly urge people, like, if you have the financial wherewithal to have bought a machine gun, buy ammunition that's going to actually work in it, that's not going to endanger the gun, and that's going to let you actually have a good time shooting it and spend a, instead of spending your entire range session clearing malfunctions, and then you get to go home and clean the entire gun 
with water solvent type of cleaning products because you've been using corrosive ammo, and not only did you not get to have any fun, but you have now filled your gun with corrosive salts that you have to clean out lest you do serious irreparable damage to the gun. It applies to bolt actions too, you know, the stuff's... If it's a bolt action you don't have to worry about whether it's got enough power to cycle the action, but it's not going to be accurate. Hang fires suck. Um, th this is still a case of false economy. Now I don't want this to become to be seen as as just saying surplus ammo is bad and new production ammo is good because new production ammo is generally pretty much always quite good. But surplus ammo can be excellent, and that uh, the case that we had there, the example we had there with uh, John and that Lewis gun, that Greek ammo is fantastic ammo, and a bunch of it was imported into the U.S. A, you know a number of years ago. And if you have it, that is absolutely as good as new manufacturer ammo. But some surplus is good and some is bad, and you have to be willing and able to do the research to determine is what you're looking at buying actually going to work well? Is it going to benefit the gun, or is it going to actually hinder your shooting experience? As long as you're willing to do that, and more importantly, willing to not buy the ammo that's not going to work well, then great, go for it. Uh, I have a bunch of surplus ammo myself. I don't have any problems using it, but I avoid the surplus ammo that's going to cause problems. Um, uh, actually, probably the best example of good surplus would be Swiss GP11, which is in many ways better than any new production uh, 7.5 Swiss you will find out there to buy. That GP11 is basically match quality ammunition. It's all in fantastic condition. This is probably because it comes out of Switzerland, and of course they're going to take good care of it and make it really well in the first place. But um, there are a whole lot of people out there with machine guns in 7.5 Swiss. Anyway. Um, get ammo that's going to be good in it. Like, there's not that much surplus that's actually dangerous, like early Turkish ammo, which will blow up your gun and it will hurt you. And I know a guy who lost fingers to that crap. Don't use Turk ammo. Like, my velocity testing on it, I broke the stock on a Mauser. How does that even happen? Um, but there's this huge amount of ammo, of surplus ammo, that is total garbage. And the only valid reason to buy it is to pull the bullets and use them in prop, you know, reload them yourself. Um, and at that point, don't pay more than you'd pay for projectiles, which I guess during today's price insanity is as much as we used to pay for complete ammo. But that's a side issue. Most of the people who are buying this ammo are not buying it to reload. Most of the people who comment about it below are the people who do buy it to reload because they want to speak up for the fact that they're not making a terrible decision despite the fact that they're buying this garbage. And I get that, and that's cool. If you reload the stuff, more power to you. Um, it's a significant time investment, and I understand why it makes sense for a lot of people to do that. But if you're going out there and buying POF 303, the British surplus, the British World War II surplus, um, a lot of the... if you're buying 8mm Lebel with the red primer sealant, you are absolutely wasting your money unless you're reloading the projectiles, because that ammo will not run reliably. Uh, and there are more examples that could come to mind, but do your research, learn what the ammo is, and for goodness sake, buy ammo that's going to work. Do, do yourself a favor. That's all I got. Thanks.